Hi everybody and welcome back. I'm Ms. McDonough and I teach third grade at Hawthorne Elementary and Seattle Public Schools. This will be our last reading lesson together this week and we've been on quite a journey. We've traveled to three different habitats. First we went to the rainforest and learned about flashy fantastic rainforest frogs. Then we traveled over to a very different type of habitat, the desert, and we read Explore the Desert by Kay Jackson. And then we went and moved to an extremely harsh environment, the Arctic region, and we read about an animal called a polar bear. Now I know a lot of my students at Hawthorne in my third grade class love reading about animals and different habitats. And as they've read these three texts, or three different regions, it probably sparked their curiosity to learn even more about different kinds of animals or even more about the same type of animal that we've already read about. Some students were interested in more animals about the Arctic, such as one of them said the Arctic fox, another wanted to know more about a ringed seal, those are what polar bears eat, and some wanted to know more about the mysterious bird species that live in the Arctic. Some have not even been identified yet by scientists. Me? I wanted to find out even more about polar bears, and that's what we're going to be reading today, a second text about polar bears called Polar Bears in Peril. We're going to continue practicing the strategy of wondering and questioning as we read. Remember, when readers wonder and question as they read, it helps them understand the text at a much deeper level. Sometimes those questions get answered as you get further along in the text, or even if you reread a certain section, sometimes they don't get answered. And in that case, you might, if it's nonfiction especially, be able to read another text about that same topic and find that answer that you're so curious about. I'm hoping today when we read po about polar bears that some of those questions that you might have asked on day one and day two that didn't get answered, maybe they'll get answered today. The things that you will need for today's lesson are a pencil, your body and your brain, don't forget that, and in your SPS learning packet, there should be the text, Polar Bears in Peril, in case you want to follow along with me or reread it after you're done. You'll also need the chart called I Wonder and I Learned, because I'm going to ask you to stop and jot three times today throughout our reading and jot down things that you've learned about polar bears and also wonderings or questions that you have. If you don't have the text, that's okay. Just follow along with me. And if you don't have the I wonder I learned chart, then just do a blank piece of paper and cut it in half or draw a line in half and write I wonder and I learned on one side. It looks like this. What I wonder and what I learned about polar bears. Let's go ahead and get ready to read our text. Our text is called Polar Bears in Peril. Bears in Peril by Elizabeth Winchester. Now, good readers, before they get ready to read, even if it's not a chapter book or a picture book, if it's a short text on paper like this, they still scan the text to get an idea of what they're reading about and do some wonderings or ask some questions. So we're going to practice a way to do that now in nonfiction text. Remember, that's true information about a topic. Today, polar bears in peril, which means great danger. Let's look at the title and let's look at that illustration, or excuse me, photograph, polar bears in peril. Hmm. Another thing that readers do is they look at the headings. Subheadings can give the reader a really good idea of what that section is going to be about. I remind my students all the time, don't skip those headings. It gives you your brain ready to understand that section. This first heading says, the important importance of the ice. Hmm. Let's look at that photograph. And let's look at the next heading. What zoos and you can do. How many people are already wondering and questioning what is going to be in this text? Just based on the title, 
and the two subheadings. Go ahead and let's do our first stop and think and practice saying what you are already wondering out loud in your own private brain or to somebody at home in whatever language is most comfortable for you. And then go ahead and jot down your first one or two questions that you have in the wondering column of your paper. Do that now. Thank you and welcome back. Something that I'm wondering right now is why are polar bears in peril or in great danger? And how do zoos help polar bears? One of the headings talked about how zoos can be helpful to polar bears. I'm really wondering how that can be. Were you wondering similar or different? Let's go ahead and get started reading the first part of this text. Let's go ahead and read the subheading here. Arctic sea ice is melting, making it harder for polar bears to survive in the wild. Let's read this caption here. Polar bears' features help them survive in the Arctic. A thick layer of fat helps keep the polar bears warm. Now we're going to read the first section of text, starting here. You may follow along by just listening to me, or you may follow along using a tracking finger in the text that you have at home. The top of the world is a wintry wonderland. Icebergs float in the cold Arctic Ocean. In the deep of winter, the temperature often falls to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit and the sun never rises. The ocean is surrounded by frozen ground. There are few people or trees, but to polar bears, the Arctic is home. Polar bears have thick fur, huge paws, and other features that make them well prepared or well suited for life in their harsh environment. In fact, they need the Arctic sea ice for survival but climate change is causing larger and larger areas of summer sea ice to melt. Experts say that if warming patterns continue, the Arctic could be free of summer sea ice by 2050. That may cause two thirds of the world's 20,000 polar bears to be gone by then too. Global climate change may not be affecting you, but it is really affecting polar bears in the Arctic Jeffrey Bonner, president of the St. Louis Zoo in Missouri, told Time for Kids. Bonner is working with zoo and aquarium officials across the country to prevent the bears from dying out. This will be our first stop in the text. What did you learn from the part I just read and what do you wonder? Go ahead and think, say it out loud, and then jot them down in the correct parts on your chart. Do that now. Now, something that I'm wondering is, what about the ice is so important to the polar bears? And something that I learn is that the ice is melting due to climate change and that ice could be gone by 2050. That's 30 years from now. That makes me really scared. Were your questions similar or different? Was what you learned similar or different to mine? Let's go ahead and read the next section, the importance of the ice. Polar bears can't survive for long on land. Seals are their main source of food. The bears hunt for seals in openings in the sea ice. Polar bears need the ice to get their prey. In summer, the polar bears that live on land eat very little and wait for the sea ice to return. Let's read this caption. Polar bears rely on sea ice as their base for hunting, eating, and breeding. With the sea ice forming later in the year and melting earlier, polar bears do not have enough opportunity or the chance to hunt and eat. Less sea ice makes it harder for the bears to catch the seals. 
The bears must swim longer distances between ice packs and they can't always make it. The ice is also getting thinner. These conditions can cause polar bears to become separated from their mothers who provide them with food. This will now be our second stop to stop and wonder and say what we've learned and then jot it down in your chart, the what I wonder and what I learned chart. Now, if one of your questions that you asked earlier was answered, go ahead and write that right next to the question that was answered in the what I learned column. Do that now. Welcome back. Now, I asked earlier, what about the ice is so important to the polar bears? And I found out that polar bears hunt for seals in holes in the ice. That is their main source of food. So if they don't have that ice to um, find their prey, they will starve. Let's, what your questions or your what you learned similar or different? Let's go ahead and read the last part of this text. What zoos? and you can do. Now, one of my questions that I also said is, what can I do to help? And what can zoos do to help? So I'm hoping to find the answers as I read. Less ice and snow in the far north is also making the entire planet warmer. Stephen Armstrong Amstrup is the chief scientist of Polar Bears International, a group that is dedicated to saving the bears and their habitat. The more people who see polar bears and understand their plight or their journey or what they're going through, the better the chance will alter or change our warming path in time to save them, he says. Few people have the chance to see polar bears in the wild. That's where zoos come in. The St. Louis Zoo in Missouri and the North Carolina Zoo in Ashboro both recently opened new polar bear exhibits. If you save the polar bears, you are doing something dramatic to help the environment, says Bonner. While there are obstacles or challenges to bringing polar bears into the country, Bonner and others are working to show how rescuing orphaned cubs would help the species survive. Orphaned means that they no longer have their mother. Zoos would provide the cubs with a safe home. Experts would work to breed the bears and keep polar bear populations healthy. You can do your part too by protecting the environment and helping efforts to save the bear's habitat. Turn off lights and appliances and save energy in other ways. If everybody does small things, that adds up, says Bonner. Now that we've finished the text, I'm gonna give you one more chance to stop and think and jot down what you've learned. If it matches with a question that you already asked, write it right next to it. And also what other questions might you still have? Go ahead and stop, think, practice saying out loud, and then stop and jot. Do that now. Thank you and welcome back. One of my questions I had was, what can I do to help? And I found out that I can do my part by saving energy, but I still think I would like to know how to do more. And I also had asked earlier, how do zoos help polar bears? And I found out that zoos rescue orphaned cubs and give them a chance to live and then later breed to create more polar bears to help enhance the population. What did you learn? Are there questions that you still have similar or different than mine? And let's talk a little bit more about this text. Let's think about the big important information that we've learned. One thing that I learned was that climate change is affecting polar bears. Let's go ahead and give you a sec yourself a second and remind yourself how does climate change affect polar bears? Go ahead, stop, think, and tell yourself in your own private brain or somebody at home, how does climate change affect polar bears? Thank you. And what have you learned about ways that people can help polar bears? That was another big idea in the text. 
go ahead, stop and think, and then share with somebody at home or in your own private brain, brain what can people do to help polar bears? Do that now. Thank you. How many people still have questions or things that they'd like to find more out more about polar bears or other Arctic animals? I know I do. So I might go ahead and find some good text to read to continue my journey in the Arctic and finding out as much as I can about polar bears. Thank you so much for being here with me these last few weeks as we've journeyed through three very different habitats. We've explored the rainforest and flashy, fantastic rainforest frogs, we went to a very different, harsh environment, the desert. And then most recently we traveled to the Arctic region and studied polar bears. Now it's time to transition to IDR. As you know, I was really enjoying the key collection by Andrea Chang and illustrated by Yang Suk Choi. I have now finished this book and I'm not going to say too much more about it because I don't want to spoil it for you. I highly recommend if you come across this book to read it. Today I really wanted to read a nonfiction book. So I went into my classroom and I looked for one that I knew my students have enjoyed in the past and I found this book titled Bubble Homes and Fish Farts. And this is by Fiona Bayrock and illustrated by Carolyn Conahan. And I'm going to read this book today for IDR. But before I get started on reading, I really want to get ready to read. If you remember, before you begin an IDR book or any book, you should always get your brain ready to read. And you can do that by reading the title and studying the cover and then reading the back cover summary. This will activate your brain and, get, and you'll be able to understand what you read better. Let's do that now. Bubble Homes and Fish Farts by Fiona Bayrock and illustrated by Carolyn Conahan. And this little guy says, P.U. That's why I live in fresh water. And the back says, bubbles are soft and squishy and full of air. They shimmer, they float, and they are very handy. Animals make bubbles, ride bubbles, breathe bubbles, and even live in bubbles. From whales to spittlebugs, from otters to humans, animals use bubbles in amazing ways. Are you already curious and asking yourselves questions and wonderings before you've even gotten started reading? I am. Some things that I'm wondering are, which animals or creatures make homes in bubbles? How does that even work? I'm also curious why this um, is t entitled fish farts. What does fish farts have to do with anything? And I'm also curious what a spittle bug is and what they have to do with bubbles. I've never heard of that creature before. Now, as you go off to read for IDR today, I want you to find a good space in the place where you live that you think you can read uninterrupted for 25 to 30 minutes, get a good fit book. And before you start reading, if you have not started the book yet, I'd like you to get your brain ready to read by doing what I just did, studying the cover and the back cover summary and the title and start wondering and questioning right away. Now, if you're already in the middle of a book, remember to stop every so often, pause and think what you've learned, but also to make wonderings and questions about the parts that you've read. Thank you so much for being here with me these last few weeks, and I hope to see you soon.